here in this room is a well. Next morning, Ichabod's hat was found. And close beside it, a shattered pumpkin. But there was no trace of the schoolmaster. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Mystery Vault Podcast. I'm your host RJ McCready and today I'm going to be talking about the legend of Sleepy Hollow. So it's not a... Uh, a mystery as such, um, with what I've spoken about, you know, in the past. Um, but what, what I think it, I think what is important with this one today is how a novel can influence you to make you think that the, you know, the story is that good that it becomes believable, I guess, in a way. And I suppose there are elements of this story that are true because it is based on fact but uh, you know whether or not in this story as as i would imagine a lot of you are familiar with this book you know the legend of sleepy hollow the headless horseman um is is it a real thing is there a is there a phantom running around on a horse you know without head or he's looking for his head um and I suppose, really, you know, I'm going to really sort of cut to the chase right here with this, is, um, you know, the power of reading a novel. And I think it's, because it's such a good story, it's like one of the, it's like the original um, American horror story. Um, it's, you know, each year with Halloween, this seems to be like the main, um, this one stands up on a pedestal, I suppose you could say. And I suppose it's that power of writing a story and then people... The Headless Horseman is is real because people believe in it because the story is that good. And there is an actual place called Sleepy Hollow. And I've taken a look at it on, on YouTube recently and it is just a very sort of cosy, leafy village in New York by the Hudson River. And everything about it just screams Halloween. And... Um, I guess you could say, you know, if you went there, you would almost expect this headless horseman to turn up. Um, and I think that is the point of today. It's just that, you know, these stories are so good that, you know, they, they become real in their own right because uh, people want to believe in it. And uh, we, we celebrate Halloween every year. Um, it's a great festival. It's something that I, I really enjoy myself. So, um, yeah, this, this is a great... Um, addition to the the mystery world i guess you could say and there is um something very romantic about this as well you know um like i say it's just that's um we're coming into autumn now and it's cozy and it's leafy and not only in sleepy hollow uh there are other places i mean i live in the uk and you can walk across a country field and you have that bit of fog and you would almost expect this phantom to <laughs> ride across with his horse you know and yeah just there's something cozy about these these stories i love it um so let's um let's talk about the uh author here so it's washington irvine who wrote the story back in 1820 so it's 200 years old and as i just said it's the uh one of the uh, sort of it's like the original american ghost story um and he, he himself was a bit of a character. Um, he he lived in in New York in these times, and he was a bit of a you know comedian. He's a bit mischievous, and that is telling in his writing as well. Um, and he basically based his the characters in this in this novel on people who he actually met himself. Um, so there was someone called Ichabod Crane who he met. Um, there was uh, the is it Katrina character, which is the love interest in, in this book. 
He stayed with a family in New York and in that family there was a daughter and her name was Katrina. And he grew very fond of her himself and he basically dedicated her to the character in the novel. Um, and then for the main character himself, the, the Phantom, the Headless Horseman, he was based on a Hessian soldier from the uh, American War of Independence from 1776. Um, and he was a, a Hessian soldier. He was um, like a type of special forces in that war. He was fighting for the British. He was actually a German. And in the Battle of the White Plains on the 28th of October, so it's very close to Halloween, in 1776, he got um, his head taken out by a cannonball. Um, so his head was spattered all over the battlefield. Um, obviously his head wasn't recovered, hence the story. Uh, but his body was um, taken away and buried in the Dutch colonial church in Sleepy Hollow. And then as legend says, he each night comes back on his horse as a phantom looking for his head so uh, you know as i said even though this is a novel it is actually based on facts you've actually got a war that happened in the american war of independence you actually had a hessian character where he's ha had his head blown off and then you've got ichabod crane who was um i think he was a captain in one of the ports in new york um who the author met and then obviously you got Katrina um, so yeah you know it, it, it does actually tie up out of all the episodes that I guess you could say I've done even though this is a novel I'm, I've actually got more tangible evidence to bring to the table and say yeah hey this is kind of like based on a true story but then obviously is does the horseman come back as a phantom um, I guess uh, as I said, it's one of those things where I think if so many people believe in it, they probably f f feel like that's going to happen when they when they go to this leafy town in October and Sleepy Hollow. Um, so yeah, you know, it's cool. It's a great story. It's a lot of fun. Um, now the novel itself, I didn't realise this. It's the first time I've really properly had a look at this because um, I've I've seen the film. It's been adapted into a, a film with Johnny Depp. I think Disney did a film in the forties as well. It's not it's not a bad movie as a as an animation, um, but for for a story which is actually very famous, it's uh, quite surprising how it, how it um, hasn't been adapted that much into films. I think there was a TV show that came out as well. Um, but the actual novel itself, it's actually a short story. I think it's only about 20 odd pages. Um, but yeah, the story is that Ichabod Crane comes to, um, a Sleepy Hollow. He's a schoolmaster. He's, uh, quite a, a slim guy. He, I don't even, I don't even think he's that, he's, he's not that much of an attractive guy. He's not like, uh, sort of Johnny Depp in the movie, but, um, he comes to the town. Um, he spends time with, um, a family there he falls in love with uh, Katrina the love interest in that but then he's got a little bit of um, competition I guess you could say with a, another character called uh, Broom Bones so he is like the antagonist in this he also wants the hand of Katrina and um, he very cleverly invests in the superstition of this local phantom in um, Sleepy Hollow, and it's also to mention that uh, Ichabod Crane is also a, a s extremely superstitious character as well, and he also has a horse called Gunpowder, which is pretty cool. And um, in in the in the story towards the end, um, Ichabod Crane goes out on Gunpowder. He gets approached by the um, headless horseman, and there's a chase which. Um, happens and he rides over the headless horseman bridge in in the novel uh i think he f falls off his horse he's taken on by the horseman and then he flees sleepy hollow never to to return so the actual story itself is kind of left a little bit open-ended it really is that that short of a story you know he turns up falls in love um gets pursued by the horseman and then he basically gets taken out you know gets ridden out of town by the uh the phantom but 
It turns out that it's actually Brum Bones who's dressed up as the, the horseman to get rid of Ichabod Crane. So it's basically a a love triangle um, story. So then onwards, the you know, like I said, the stories become popular. It, it's almost like romance size. The Sleepy Hollow, as I said, is a real place. Um, the locals have named roads after this novel so you've got, got i think you've got gunpowder avenue pumpkin street uh headless horseman drive stuff like that um they celebrate it every year for for halloween there are actually um, monuments and statues um the other thing as well is the actual uh pumpkin which we celebrate every year so that is basically um used as as like a type of symbol of the headless horseman's you know head uh, which is pretty cool um now let's have a look at uh now i did have a look at is, is there another headless horseman around the world is it just in CPROs? it turns out uh, there is it's kind of interests me to see if there is anything going on elsewhere um, in the english welsh folklore you've got the green knight now this is something that's there's a um, there's a movie that's just come on Netflix which um, delves into this but um, just very quickly as an overview of that, this is a King Arthur legend um, Knight Gwain who gets approached by the Green Knight um, he's the main uh, protagonist antagonist I suppose, depends which way you look at it um, he get basically in a nutshell he gets approached by the Green Knight um, Green Knight challenges him to like a jewel. Um, Gwain chops off the Green Knight's head, then the Green Knight walks off, and basically it is like one of those things to say, well, I turned up and gave you the opportunity to see how you would react, and the Green Knight's basically come up to one of King Arthur's knights just to say, I've just proven how brutal you guys can be, and that's basically the point of that story. Um, but that is an old, um, very old folklore tale that obviously goes right back to um, how, however old the uh, King Arthur story is. I think it's about 2,000 years old in English Welsh folklore, so that's been about for a bit. Um, you've also got up in Scotland, uh, they also have a horseman story up there going back to the... Um, I think that might be like the 14th century around about that time a character called Ewan and he got decapitated trying to defend his village and apparently he still haunts that village today and then in northern India the state of Rajasthan now the, the horseman Headless Horseman here is more of a heroic figure to protect people. And again, it's sort of similar to the Urim story where he took on some thieves in the village. Unfortunately, he got his head taken off, but legend says that even though he got beheaded, he still continued to take on the thieves. And then up to today, today he's become like a symbol of um, protection. So he's more of a, uh, a hero. In, in that story and then you've got the uh, Brothers Grimm you know famous for um, all their Grimm uh, uh, fairy tales you know the sort of little red riding hood and they wrote a story about the Headless Horseman as well so um, apparently that was set in the uh, town of Dresden so yeah it's there, there is other stuff going on apart from CB Hollow but CB Hollow is the one and I think when you mention that a lot of people can sort of say yeah I I think generally when you talk about that a lot of people know what you're talking about so as a roundup uh, people that uh, the the sleepy hollow i think it's cool i think it's fun i think it's great i think it's um like i say it's the original american horror story uh, i think a lot of people have a lot of fun with this um it, it, it's a little bit romantic as time time's gone on um and for for the mystery as you know my findings for this does the headless horseman exist well i think it does and you know the point of this episode today is you know it is the power of reading a novel and if you believe in it maybe you might see it so if you go to sleepy hollow and you just happen to pick a day where it's very sort of foggy and leafy 
you could probably just see it there in your imagination. I think it's great. I think it's a fun one. It's a real sort of cosy um, horror story. It's a lot of fun. So, you know, Washington Irvine, as a legacy, has done a fantastic job of uh, leaving this um, great legacy. Um, now, just before I close the episode up, got something a little bit... Um, yeah, you ever heard that sort of phrase, you're only six degrees? Now, I spoke to um, my good friend and listener, he's a big support of the show, Darren Randall. And um, it's, it's kind of sort of off the subject, but then it come back onto the subject. So recently, um, some of you may know, I go treasure hunting as a hobby. And uh, recent, well, uh, about two years ago, I found a coin which was quite rare. It's now in a museum. Now, I told Darren about this. And then I gave him the name of the museum. And he went, oh, that's funny. Because a museum he used to visit up in Mansfield, called the Mansfield Museum, was built by a chap called Andrew Carnage, who was a American industrialist. And um, he built this museum around about 1860. And then the tie up there with that coin that I found was actually the museum that it's in was um, either sponsored or built by Carnage himself. So through this conversation, I, 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 Darren then went on to go and say that when he died, he got buried in Sleepy Hollow. And I thought, oh, that's strange because I'm just about to uh, do an episode on Sleepy Hollow. Um, so what I'm saying here is it, it, just a little bit of a sort of segue from, you know, th- what I'm talking about today, he, I, and I think a lot of you got people that are listening to this show. How many times is it when you do something like that, and then you talk to someone? And it's 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 crazy how it sort of like connects. You think that's a bit strange because that's something that I'm doing this week, and then you've just told me that, and it ties up to what I'm doing. And uh, you know, as we say, it's that you're only sort of six degrees away from that. So I thought of. Um, mention that on the show so thanks for that Darren it's a bit spooky it's a bit strange and um, at the end of the day that's what this show's all about isn't it you know <laughs> the, the mysteries that turn up on a weekly basis is just um, spooky but there you go there's um, there's a little bit of a tie into uh, Sleepy Hollow there so um, there you go guys um, like I say this is a little bit late drop and I was hoping to do this for Halloween but um, just got tied up with some stuff um but yeah, hope hope you enjoyed that episode. Um, and if you find yourself walking along a field with you know the leaves just shedding and uh, a little bit of fog rolling over, and you hear the hoofs of a horse coming over, look out for that headless horseman. So um, there you go. <laughs> it's all good fun. And check out the films as well; they're pretty pretty decent movies as well. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, before I close the show, let's do a little bit of admin. So I am a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. So please go and check out um, all the other shows on there, including. Uh, my other show which is Bite Size Cinema Podcast so there's a lot going on with that as I said there's some exciting stuff coming up there I've got some interviews with um, a special effects guy and one of the stuntmen from um, Friday the 13th so that's all good stuff Um, you can find the show on iTunes, YouTube, um, Spotify if you put in uh, the Mystery Vault podcast into Google, you should um, it should take you to a listening platform. And I have a Facebook page as well where I'm most active, so um, that's the best place to contact me if there's anything that you want me to um, take a look at, any mysteries out there you think I should should do, let me know. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, as always, keep it spooky, keep it safe, and I will see you soon. here in this room is a well. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, 
Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.